Well, here we go. Another day of storms on the Great Plains. Already have tornado warnings out for Texas. Yesterday, though, in Iowa, big tornadoes. And I'm going to show you just a very brief clip. This is from Reed Timmer. You definitely want to head to his YouTube page to see more of that. Yeah, and if you take a look at the radar for that same time, you would probably not suspect it. Not a typical supercell appearance, but on the storm relative velocity, there's a couplet, 100 to 110 knots of rotation in that TVS. The correlation coefficient definitely showing that vortex right there. Let's take a look at the weather around the country. That frontal system that produced that severe weather in Iowa has pushed into the Great Lakes region. Cold air advecting into the wake of that, but in advance of that cold front, some very warm conditions. Temperatures well into the 80s, even a couple of 90s. I'm not sure I see any on the map, but they are forecasting 91 degrees for Albany and Burlington and 92 at Syracuse. Even up in Canada, 80s. Yeah, look at that. All the way up towards James Bay, just about there. And there are thunderstorms from James Bay all the way down towards Lake Huron and Lake Erie. Canada has severe watches and warnings in the eastern part of Ontario from Matagami to North Bay and Barrie. Rainfall warnings for the western part of Ontario. They're looking for about two to three inches there around Armstrong, Sioux, Lookout, Dryden, and Kenora. Heading back into the U.S., parts of the Appalachians in New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia under a severe watch this afternoon. Wind advisories in northwestern Wisconsin. Kind of a mess there, but uh, yeah, there it is. Gusting to 36. Forgot the name of that town. I remember stopping at a Burger King there many years ago. They are getting some very gusty winds, and there are gale warnings in the western part of Lake Superior. Kind of a quiet day for the southeastern U.S. under southerly flow. This resembles a summertime Bermuda high situation. Temperatures pretty warm, but then we go back into Texas. We catch the tail end of that polar front from Memphis, Little Rock, all the way to Dallas and Midland and the dry line pretty far west from about San Angelo south to Sanderson. The main area of storms we're looking at right now that's going to be around Coleman, Texas, Santa Ana, out there in the Colorado River region and also in the Dallas area. They're getting some storms all the way up towards Paris. Let's take a quick look at the radar. Yeah, you can see earlier around 2.50 p.m. looked a little bit more interesting. Almost a supercell there over Plano. However, as we go forward into the rest of the afternoon, looks a little bit more multicellular. One little storm right there over Greenville, some weaker cells across Dallas County, but not much going on. We do see that outflow boundary, that front, a little bit of both there, extending through the Metroplex back towards Eastland and Ranger. Then we get that other cell down there around Brownwood. There it is on the San Angelo radar, the southern cell up there near Palo Pinto. This looks like a left mover. You can see that backwards structure. The main updraft area probably on the northern periphery of that storm. Further south, we did have tornado warnings earlier for the Coleman area. Looking a little bit more disorganized. Other cells forming out to the west there. We've got a new tornado warning on this cell south of Sterling City. And this is tracking towards San Angelo. You can see that outflow boundary looking very spectacular there. Sinking south, reinforced by that storm earlier around Robert Lee. And as we go south, we get into some really intense heat. Heat advisories in the Rio Grande Valley, you can see 101 over 67 at Laredo, 100 over 75 there north of Monterey. And they have had a heat wave down there in Mexico. You can see at the very bottom of the map, there's 109 over 75. Let's check out the Aviation Weather Center maps. And you can see 100s all across northeast Mexico 
in the higher terrain up there on the plateau, a very hot day, 88 degrees at Mexico City. The all-time high there is 94, and we saw 90 yesterday. Another very hot area was Merida right here. They were up to 106 yesterday. We're seeing 104 for today. And continuing our tour of weather across the country, a new cold front moving through the northwestern U.S. That's it right there. Cold core across southern Washington. Temperatures as low as 46 degrees there at Pendleton and widespread showers throughout the entire northwest region. That cold air mass will shift into the Rockies for tomorrow. We do have winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories for tonight in southwestern Montana. Some areas on the summits getting up to 25 inches of snow, one to five inches in the valleys above 5,000 feet, and there could be impacts on Interstate 90. Frost advisories in eastern Idaho for tonight, the Upper Snake River Valley, and a high wind watch for Thursday in the lee slopes of Wyoming. We take a quick look at the upper air conditions, and there's the polar front jet coming in from the Gulf of Alaska into the northwestern U.S. There's the cold core weather system across Washington, jet extending all the way to the Great Lakes, hooking up there in Quebec. Then down to the south, subtropical jet all the way from southern Arizona into southern Missouri. 80 to 90 knots up there, 250 millibars, and almost 100 knots across El Paso. For a general idea of what's coming our way, we look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. Quite energetic up there in Oregon. Also some very strong jet energy across Illinois and Iowa. Then we go into tonight. Everything progressing pretty rapidly. That system in the Great Lakes lifts up there into Ontario and the next one upstream moving into the Great Basin area rather rapidly. This is a channeled flow indicating a strong elongated jet running about like that and the stronger jet stream dynamics, the ageostrophic flow, the upward forcing that's moving into the Yellowstone area, southwestern Montana, and helping to produce some of those snow showers there. Again, this is one in the morning later tonight. You can see that there's not really much going on in the southern plains. Some ripples of weak short waves embedded in the flow. And that's certainly enough to get some thunderstorms going this time of year if you have enough instability and not too much capping. Then we go into Thursday and Friday. What's happening across the Great Plains? Well, we've got this next wave moving through Nebraska and the Dakotas. Then into this weekend, yeah, that lifts northward. Another strong trough moving onto the west coast. And that moves into the Four Corners area for Saturday and emerges in the Central Plains for later Saturday and Sunday. Then we get a little bit of ridging coming in for Tuesday and Wednesday. So that probably will shut down things a little bit in the Central Plains. In fact, maybe all of the Great Plains. We'll have to check back in on that for next week. But uh, yeah, lots of ridging midweek. Then our next trough comes in for later next week. And that'll affect mostly the Northern Plains. We can look at the 850 millibar chart about 5,000 feet to evaluate our low level jet dynamics and kind of see what's involved in all of this. So this starts out at 1 p.m. this afternoon. You can see a weak low level jet coming in from the Gulf Coast area about 20 knots into Dallas and up towards Fort Smith. So that's crossing that frontal boundary right there, the intersection of that favored for thunderstorm development. A little bit stronger this evening, 7 p.m. right there. Then the overnight hours, that's typically when the low level jet strengthens. 25 knots up to Dallas, a separate band up there in the high plains. Then tomorrow morning, this is how it looks. So 25 knots up into Dallas, Fort Worth, and that other branch up there from Dodge City up towards Pierre. So let's go ahead and put it all together. This is the afternoon chart, cold front through the Midwest into the Southern Plains and that very strong, compact cold air system in the Northwestern US. You can see those thicknesses indicated by the red dashed lines, the purple indicating the 540 line and the blue indicating the sub 540 
thicknesses. So that's going to be the coldest air right there and snow showers indicated as well. So going into the overnight hours, active MCS pattern from Arkansas into North Texas. By 1 a.m., most of it will shift into Louisiana and Arkansas. That cold air continues to advance southward through the Great Basin area coming into Salt Lake City. Maybe some snow showers in the higher elevations. Meanwhile, a break in that heat wave out there in the northeastern U.S. as that cold front comes in from the west. So for tomorrow afternoon, well, we are looking at a SPC enhanced risk in central and eastern Nebraska along that little dry line right there. You can see that moisture return feeding right up there, the moisture nose going into Nebraska. A big warm up for West Texas as that southwesterly flow gets established, looking for upper 80s and 90s returning. And for the Rockies, cold air advancing southeastward, looking for highs of only 49 degrees at Billings and 45 at Dillon. Then going into the overnight hours for Thursday into Friday, looks like some MCS popped up right in that area there in that moisture return. Cold air continues flowing into the central plains and going into Friday afternoon, with that cold front approaching Illinois, we're looking for a chance of severe weather, marginal risk in effect for Illinois, Missouri, and Arkansas ahead of that cold front. It is going to be a hot one in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas, 108 at both Laredo and Del Rio with 99 degrees at San Antonio. And cold up north with that cold air advection filtering down south, 52 at Bismarck for a high and 58 at Fargo looking only for 50 degrees at Duluth. Then going into Saturday, kind of a quiet weather day. Southerly flow once again for the Great Plains. Triple point up there in northwestern Kansas. And then for Sunday, a new frontal system coming out of the Rockies. Cold air filtering down once again, but it is going to be a hot one in Texas. Looking for 110 degrees at Laredo and Del Rio. San Antonio, 102, and Austin, 100 degrees. Well, looks like the San Angelo storm starting to weaken as it gets undercut by that cold air. You can see that cold air just pushing south like that, coming right under the mesocyclone. So for now, looks like maybe a little bit of wind and hail for the San Angelo area, and hopefully that's going to be it for the tornado risk. We certainly don't need that in the city there. The meso looking a little bit weaker. We are observing it from the San Angelo radar right here, and we're seeing some outbounds right up there north of the city and inbounds from the west. They are kind of spread out. That looks like maybe a couplet of maybe five to six miles wide and just not very much intense shear. Elsewhere around Texas, this complex here around Brownwood, Goldthwaite, not doing very much, still trying to organize an isolated cell north of uh, Langtree. And checking back in on Dallas, I don't think we have much of anything going on through there, but there is a tornado warned storm around Prescott and Hope, Arkansas. Definitely looks like a lot of rain involved in that storm, and I, I wonder if we have any chasers out there in southwestern Arkansas. Definitely not the kind of place we would expect on a day like this. And we look at the forecast for the rest of the evening from the high resolution rapid refresh. The coloring on here is going to be the theta E, the equivalent potential temperature, which is kind of a combination of temperature and dew point. The higher the theta E, the more energetic the parcels are going into a storm updraft. So we start out at about 3 p.m., there's that complex there in Coleman and Brownwood. So the model capturing that pretty closely, and there's the San Angelo storm. So the model got this as well. That's a good sign. Also showing the weak convective activity in northeast Texas, which is pretty close to what we have as well. So now we're up to about 5 p.m., 6 p.m., probably about the time you're watching this couple of clusters moving into central Texas, into Waco, and around San Saba, and progressing into the Temple area right there. So that will be an area to watch as we get close to dark, 
And then we get kind of an MCS from about Tyler through Mahea down to Temple and back towards Lano, I think. It's been a while since I've been through those towns. Anyway, that'll persist into the rest of this evening. Tracking into deep east Texas. Then we get a little bit of outflow on the back end, helping to generate some elevated storms in southern Oklahoma. So that'll be with us through much of the evening, progressing into the mountainous regions of southeastern Oklahoma. And just a quick update there in Houston. You probably remember last week there was that derecho that moved through Houston. Still 51,000 people without power. That's got to be rough with the humidity that we have today. And here's where those outages are located. This is going to be downtown Houston. Zoom in just a little bit. You can see those neighborhoods that are out. So the north and northwest side and the rural outlying areas around Hempstead, those are having trouble as well. Hopefully they get reconnected very soon. And I'll leave you with some footage from Greg out there in San Antonio. Thanks to Greg for this great footage. And we'll be back for another edition on Friday. Hopefully we'll see you then. Take care and have a great Wednesday evening. Bye-bye.